Nipersha ya ka jing reka me ka NPH re nipersha ya ka jing kerki kumaka ka jing bam jakhlut kamlo ka sentur kan ingmet sa jing bam jakhlut and and frankly speaking i'm little aghas with even our cm statement by ong ba we should be number one. i mean what the fish i mean you know you are bottom and everywhere on all index of growth you are the last or second last or third last almost everywhere kble phi baro ni priang subhai phi shagani ka program ka jongi ka bangi khot ka rinsan ya thir ka bang in pin e how youtube channel ba thmai jongi ka ta u for front media hakani ka rinsan ka long bangi ya kren ngi ta ha lor ki mat ki ba pher ba pher ki ba ta ya ke em lang ka salang ka jongi ba ka ni ka episode ka bening kong ka jongi menta ka sngi ngi ya kren ha lor ka national education policy la ni ka nep r hajar r pho but ha ka ni ka jaka matang ya dan bat ngi e professor lakhon kma ibade professor jong ka bai chemistry na po nehu ibade ru president jong ka nehu ta but ring ka bi don e professor sk pradhan ibade e teachers representative jong ka academic council but ru ec member jong ka mcta la ni ka miglai college teachers association ti kumbang i te baro ba ka nep menta baro ki baro ki kran chapang jong ka ni but bon ki bakadi ki ai ka ni ka nep ngan kran da da ka english kan diat knang ba baro kin sngu tho ki tu bam kran kha si kin sngu tho ngi tu ka nep ka de ka ka sarkar india hi kraun ra ekani ka nep da ka jing thmu ban pin thmai ya kar kom trikam jong ka tnat puli puthi ha ka jilla ba ka ri hi baro ka wei so india's national education policy or the uh, or the nep 2020 aims to revolutionize the education system in the country by addressing several problems and adopting several methods and strategy and to bring about reforms in the education system so before we go ahead let us first know the basic of nep so professor lakhon what according to you is the nep and how do you think it will go a long way in addressing these problems in society like the root the root learning the um, lack of vocational education in the country and the fact that people uh, students are more into like i said root learning and not skill based learning well uh, thank you kong i think you know uh, it's a very interesting uh, discussion because you know uh, before we really come to uh, the core of it which is the problem in the nep ug level i think holistically speaking you know i think this nep seems to have a lot of meaning uh, in the sense that you know uh, when you compare the curriculum that we have because ideally speaking you know uh, uh, we started from the top ideally i would believe that it should have been starting from the base you know which is basically how the nep 2020 was designed uh, right now uh, we are start we have started at the pg then we are trying to start at the ug we have not even talked about school now when you look at the school of course you know uh, i mean our the classical way of uh, teaching learning that we have in the old curriculum certainly there is a need for a change because uh, many a time you know we don't enough producing uh, people who are really employable to a greater extent and if they happens to drop out let's say by few after few classes say 5 6 8 10 or 12 then they don't find any gainful employment because they really lack what we call skill in the sense so to that extent i think uh, uh, it seems impressive uh, but it's too early to say anything because we have not yet experimented with it so that's where i think the problem lies uh, we when you look at the whole uh, structure per se it seems promising i would say you know, as a as a as a faculty i would i would and i have gone through almost everything that i have written in the document I find that it's it's going to revolutionize things but it has to start at the grassroots level rather than top down you know it should have been bottom up approach mm-hmm. which uh, and 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 frankly speaking uh, uh, our state government is not doing anything the people khat pe ka jinglong ka pule puthi jong ni ni dang dong sha den ba ngim pat yo rai ban ban prakhat kum no ka state government ngim tip ka rang le ayo ban implement namar pi don kam ban implement haka por ba byang bakin ki khna samla ki ba mi nakini ka system jungi bagi puli ha ka nep 2020 ngathra ki don kam bakin long ki break ki bala don sha ta ka skill ngi ong lada ki la puli tang kinder classroom le le hanre they should be able to be employed because most of the time they will end up doing say small mystery job or some coolie job or something which is not giving them enough to sustain a living particularly if you have a family and so on they don't end up earning enough so that is definitely going to be a challenge and i would believe that the state is in the preparation of uh, implementing it at the 
you know, at the bottom up approach. Right now, of course, it is top down approach. Then you say, Kiran Halor, Gajing, Gajing, Don Benta, Jong Kasarkar, Haban Pentakam, a Nika policy. So, Professor, Professor Pradhan, what do you think about this NEP and how do you see this, um, the way that Nehu is approaching this entire process of bringing to the state, implementing it now in a hurried way? Okay, with regard to, thank you for inviting me to this talk. <coughs> now, uh, you're asking basically like the way NEP is being implemented by Nehu. Yes, okay. because uh, like Professor Lakhan had all stated yeah, yeah, that yeah. it is an impressive yeah, yeah. policy. That's right. So from the MCTA point of view, that is Meghalaya College Teacher Association, we were never, you know, against NEP mm -hmm. per se. You know, we see many positives in it, as he has rightly mentioned, uh, mentioned no? Uh, <coughs> Uh, you see, this NEP is basically envisioned by the envisioned by the it is a vision of the Prime Minister. He is, you know, that Atma Nirvar Bharat or you know self reliant India, what you call it. So that is what he is trying to bring in. You know, he is trying to, you know, you know, at present what we are having is a system where you know art, science, and commerce is there, right? So they want to bring it multidisciplinary, where such you know artificial demarcation will not be there. Student from commerce will join to arts, arts will go to science, you know, that will be there. And they will provide a 360 degree development of the student. And another cornerstone of this whole NEP is the uh, internship, where they want to provide vocational education. And thereby, you know, uh, our, we will be producing graduates which will be employable, which is also true. Then another concern which I feel like, you know, as an uh, MCTM member, that which is really, you know, uh, I would say one point which you want me to point out, no, if which is really the magic thing which NEP people who designed this policy did was they have reduced the dropout level to almost zero with NEP. How they have done is after doing first year, you are, you know, if you want to give up studies, we used to say earlier dropped out. Mm -hmm. Here we will give you a certificate. After two years, if you want to drop out, you are not a dropout, we will give you a diploma. Got my point here. So by one single stroke, the dropout ratio will become to zero. <laughs> I mean, that is quite interesting. So now that is what I do agree with, you know, Professor Lakhan with regard to, you know, how oh, per se we are not against NEP. Now, <coughs> you're coming to the question that you have put in, like, you know, the way NEP is implemented in, you know, <coughs> by Nehu. First thing, we have to keep in mind, you know, the notification, you know, which was issued by the OSD, that is who is acting as the CDC, that is College Development Council. That was issued to all the principal in uh, to uh, of affiliated colleges in Nehu, uh, 12th of July. In the notification, it specifically mentioned that the decision to implement the NEP with from the academic session 22, 20, uh, 23, 20, uh, 23, 24 has been taken in the academic council, and the same was approved by the EC. Now we, become, being an, a member of the academic council, know very well that the decision was never taken. So that was a defective order. Right, that was a defective order and we felt that, you know, it is, you know, if we just keep quiet and let that happen, it will be very wrong on our part. We are a teachers association, we, if we don't stand up to this type of, you know, defective order being passed by the, you know, higher ups in the university, that will be too much. Right. Do you think, should we say like the VC, to be candid enough, the VC is acting on pressure because maybe the BGP government wants to complete the entire thing before the Lok Sabha election, just to prove that they have done something for the education uh, sector <laughs> in the mean, country? I mean, I mean, people are free to assume whatever they want to assume. You know, you may say like, okay, uh, they have failed in, you know, implementing one uniform civil code, then they come to uniform NEP. No, that is up to you. I mean, people are free to design. I mean, don't put words into my mouth. What I'm trying to say here is basically like, you know, <clears throat> as has been given by the VC in his interview, and I think the press conference that he did, he said the, the one of the reason why he, the first target or goal for him that he wanted to achieve as soon as he appointed the VC of this uh, university was that he wanted to implement NEP. So that is one thing. So what we are doing is, you know, we are protesting against this defective notification, which has got, he was there in the academic council, so he can watch whether I'm saying right or wrong, whether you know, the decision of the academic council was taken or not, as mentioned in the notification. Now, it's very important why people are saying like, you know, it's just a defective notification and, you know, he's bringing so much good. Uh, people are going to the extent of saying like, you know, he's something like a Robin Hood. Like, you know, he's doing something wrong, but it's for the good of our children, right? So that is the extent that is being portrayed at. So it's okay. But I feel like if we, as a society, as a people from Meghalaya, where, you know, the Northeast is viewed as people who are very docile, who doesn't know how to assert their rights, 
and we'll take everything from, you know, even if it's wrong, we'll just keep quiet. If we let this happen, this narrative that is generally held by people from outside, about the Northeast, especially Meghalaya, will be further strengthened, you know, that we take all this type of thing. So we want that, you know, that this should not be allowed to go without, you know, coming some, you know, forthcoming. If you say that we are wrong, then you tell us we are wrong. We are ready to apologize. Okay. So, Professor Lakhan, yeah. we know that NEP, NEP 2020, 2020 was, um, was what was said. The belief it harai ka shimporingi na do araja arpo ha do menta araja arpo lai long ban pen trikam suki suki ban pen kre ki noi kai ki khna school bakin pen long bakin you can ki la ban cope up with this with this changing or overhaul of courses long ka ega ban slam okay covid 19 ni la ban yo tama ngim la ban blame sa yo covid 19 ka dei anga thrai pe problem with our state is ngi ngi suki palat ha kono kono ka kam ngi that's why probably we are second or last in the list as far as pretty poor state yes. is concerned. It, it makes perfect sense because let's say life's name, I don't see anything happening at the grassroots level for the school. For the UGPG, we'll talk later. But when I look at this school, you know, I don't see any initiative. Yes, there might be some talk going on. So this, I would say that, I mean, if I have to be very frank, I would say it's kind of, you know, uh, state government not taking education very seriously. And, and indeed they talk big when it comes to media and so on and but when it comes to pure implementation I think they seriously lack and maybe because of this uh, now the education commission has come where they have appointed a chairman and members maybe they will be entrusted with this job but that has to be done at a mission mode and ideally speaking we have time till 2030 so between 2030 to 40, we are supposed to have NDP implemented at every level. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, UGPG will come next few years and so on. Mm -hmm. Across the country, I believe there will be no issue. Andre, the people who school, they will let's say, Arajar Arfulai. That's a new snap. Bang in your implement. How can you get a new snap? The school, the NDP, the NDP, the NDP, the NDP, the NDP, the NDP, policy is good. But problem is implementation. How do you get a new snap? Number one, the NDP, the NDP, the NDP, the NDP, the NDP, the NDP, Kam tam ki school ki baduk, ki school ba penyai da kashnong, ki school ba penyai da ki balang, ki school ki ba penyai da ki ki wegi wegi seng. Government school by and large they will manage number ki infrastructure kala biang ka building kala biang ki nohi kaile la thong la ki ki ka tulok ruki oba biang. Hanai ha school ba dengi pen, let's say don't wait nohi kai, shim class lo ba rakhoi, lene argun nohi kai, hi kai class one ru, class two ru, class three, class five. NEP will not work that way, and that's why ngat don't come ba ban sutu ba. Haba pi kwa ban puntre kam ek NEP kam tam haka school pi don kam ban sotho bhai ek NEP because NEP kam de tangka dokumen ba pi ong sedang no eka course ka don ki wei ki wei ki jing ya day bat ka NEP kum kam kum kam tam eka infrastructure ki jing don jong ki no hikai ki jing ya day bat ka shnong jing ya sotho lang bat pala no hikai lani ka sorkar ka hap kulum lang ikne bar khoj bhab bol ha jo ban kum no kin krishan eka eka yiki school kam tam ki school ke ba jinjar kam tam po no kundong Amar Bonsen ni i ha nong kundong kisha i ben. Even even now when you look at our rural areas, the schools are rarely monitored. Some teacher go don't go to school. I don't think anybody cares. And the moment you decide to bring an app to tag their you know to track track their attendance, they are up in arms. So that is the fact. Yes, yes. So we we know we all know honestly the education system in the state of Meghalaya is is not good. Let's say. Uh, the previous uh, board exams results are testimony to that. And we've seen so many schools in Garo Hills. Yeah. Many of these schools don't have teachers, don't have good facilities, don't have schools. Yeah. So the question is, how are you going to implement NEP that talked about new facilities and infrastructure like you've mentioned earlier? How we, are we going to put all of this together and, in, and ensure that we achieve that aim to revolutionize the education system when the education system itself in the state is very flawed. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'll just add to it, you know, because, you know, we are talking about school right now, we have not even touched upon the university, at least certain, I, he has touched, but I have not yet touched. <laughs> now, I'll give you an example. So, using this uh, UG implementation, then probably you'll understand the state of affair. Look at this whole system that we have. Government doesn't seem to know what Nihu is doing. Uh, Nihu Academic Council, which is, let me put it on record, is the highest authority as far as the academic policy of the university is concerned. 
how a curriculum has to be implemented, when it will be implemented, what will be its structure, what will be its course. Everything is done by the academic council. It is the supreme role that this every council pours. But right here, I fully agree with him, you know, we were there in the academic council and the whole discussion was when we passed the ordinance, the OC8, which relates to this uh, new NEP uh, curriculum that we have for UG level. And then, of course, the RC12, which speaks about different uh, sets of, you know, uh, syllabi structures and so on. You will see that even at university, which is supposed to be a very structured uh, body, you know, with you have uh, academic council, then you have the executive council, and then you have. But you see one person trying to implement things and knowing fully that that person doesn't have the right. Now, I'll tell you why I say so. And, and I say with uh, being a member of academic council, I say this with full conviction. But Kahok Jonga Academic Council, U Vice Chancellor Umla Abanshim. Um, don't bore, I can show you, this is the, I have a lot of papers here with, which speaks about the NEHU Act that defines what will be the role of the academic Any council. Yeah. And hence, even at university level, when you see that such a learned body is there, well, all professors are there, you know, you have representative from the government, representative from the college teachers and so on and so forth. Even there, we see serious lack of communication, whereby we as academic council decided that certainly you can't do it in 23, otherwise we would have never um, went ahead. I, why I uh, sometimes get a little agitated with the conduct of uh, the, the, the uh, uh, vice chancellor is, it is not his prerogative. If it was his prerogative to decide, we won't sit in academic council from morning till 10, 10 p.m. discussing the ordinance yeah. and the structures. We have spent n numbers of hours from the morning till 10:30 without being uh, provided with with dinner. But we we did it because it was important for our students. There, I say that you know when you have from the top where everybody seems to be understanding, you have all the facilities with you, it's just that you don't have the right mindset. You want to hurry up, and I say so, why? Because, you know, when we have decided, we have decided that yes, now the ordinance is done, now you have the syllabus of first and second semester, this at all, if it will be implemented, it will be done 24, 25, so we have enough time. Otherwise, we would have never moved ahead, even with, you know, approving this OC8, the ordinance that we have, and the RC12. We approve because we knew that it will not be implemented 23 because we don't have time. Why I say because, you know, uh, sometimes people don't understand and I know, I have seen almost all the prospectors of all the colleges, almost all, particularly in the city, and I have seen what they have advertised. They have advertised that you will be provided, you will be offered a, a, a three years course having six semesters and different combinations of subject and fee structures and all. And, and to much surprise, I mean, there is one college that I won't, I won't name any, I and mean, I'll try to be very much restricted here. Uh, I don't go to college, but prospectus curriculum. I don't know prospectus. I don't know if you have a department, but the course is not going to be first semester paper, second semester paper, third semester, including whether it is science or commerce or economics or whatever. Which means, and they have very smartly removed the prospectus of 23. 22 you can still get, mm. but 23 you will not get because they have, that is the college which have actually started the NEP course even without having proper structure. And why I say this, because if, if you look at the third semester, now there is a course which is basically vocational, uh, educational and training course. If you ask that course to anybody, what is it? No, Nobody no, will be able to tell. We have not drafted the syllabus. Now, this is where I have problem. I have no problem with first and second semester, but how can you give a course to someone without not knowing what is being offered in the third semester? And if so, you ask anyone. Nobody, say, for example, I'll give you so that it's become easier for you because, you know, we don't want to just say, uh, without without going into the, uh, uh, the the structure per se, before I just finish this statement. Say you have in third semester, you have a VTC course. It says vocational education and training mm -hmm. course, minor course, other nine courses, if any approved by academic council, are four credit. If you ask me what is this, I don't know. Because, you because we have not decided. Yes. We have not discussed, we have not decided. And there are many more. Similarly, you go to fourth semester, fifth semester, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. My problem is, why did you create such kind of problem? Because the idea was the clear cut guidelines that was given from academic council was, we approve first and second semester uh, the syllabus, we approve the ordinance, now let's work on it so that if at all it will be implemented, it will be done by 24, 25. Okay, now we, uh, if we move on to the college level, 
So, sir, we uh, we know that uh, the government wants to implement, like uh, sir said, mm -hmm. from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. So, do you think our college students, mm -hmm. this is going to be a challenge for both the students and the, teachers, the teachers? Yeah. Because how are they expected to cope up with these changes yes, yes, in yes. the education system mm -hmm. if they have not, their foundation is not as strong yes. as the NEP had mentioned, mm -hmm. a strong foundation, but mm -hmm. they don't have that. Mm -hmm. So how are they going to cope up with this shift, this sudden shift in the, uh, in the entire course? Okay. Uh, uh, <coughs> as he has rightly mentioned, no, the first thing, the implementation of NEP should have been bottom up. Mm -hmm. Now it is top down. Mm -hmm. Now we have to keep in mind, no? like uh, for example, uh, at present, you know, we are having like in my subject, like, you know, we have got eight honors and around four of them will be some past course papers. So totally we are teaching around 12 papers. So when NEP comes and it will full strength, I will be, uh, we'll be having around 15 major and around three minors, so it will be around 18 papers. So naturally, you know, more papers will have to be dealt with. Another thing, <coughs> you have to be very clear, you no, know, this will require a little bit of technical knowledge yeah. with regard to, you know, how it is going to face uh, the problem. Now. <coughs> Here, you have to keep in mind, in Nehu, right, the curriculum committee was established, uh, was set up in somewhere in December in 2022. Then after that, they went for a winter vacation. They came back on February, middle of February, and they took their time, took their time, and it was in July that the syllabus was, you know, actually passed. And from August, you're implementing. Yes, yes. So just imagine you have a total paradigm shift with regard to papers. We have got some papers called, you know, multidisciplinary courses, MDCs and VACs, you know, you know, SECs, you know, there are so many different papers. How will the teacher, you know, understand, you know, with regard to what are the papers being taught? They have, in fact, they, many of the uh, colleges does, don't even have faculties to teach MDCs and others vocational courses. Okay. One thing. Another thing, you know, <coughs> right, since it's multidisciplinary, what will happen is, you know, the Nehu is saying like, you know, the teachers, you know, some of the teachers, principals are supposed to uh, select some teachers and put them as counsellors mm -hmm. to guide the student who comes for admission in the first semester. Because, you know, you, when you take, I say for example, you want to take botany as honours. So, that will be a major paper. Then you'll have to offer one minor paper from any stream, okay. It can be from arts, science and commerce, this minor. Plus, you are given a basket of 10 papers that are called MDCs, right? So, you are supposed to choose. Now, what will happen is, if you look at it, I have been telling you from the very beginning, you know, the, the idea is of this NEP is to develop a rounded personality, to go, you know, a self-reliant person, self-employable person, okay? So, now, when a teacher is sitting there and, you know, going through the form and meeting student and counselling, the teacher is not just to look at the, you know, inter IQ of the student. He will, or he or she, the teacher will have to look at the AQ, aptitude quotient of the student. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Because on the basis of the aptitude, you will ask him to take major or minor, and you will also have them MDCs and other vocational courses. Because it is aptitude. At the end of the day, you know, when you finish your first year degree and get a certificate, you should be employable. Now, the teacher who is sitting here, doesn't have clear idea of what is MDC and what is vocational courses. Forget about how to test an aptitude of a student. So it will be total mess up thing. So what we are trying to say here is, you know, if you give us time, we, when you said we were not against NDP per se, it is many good things. We thought like, you know, okay, we'll ask for one year, maybe the, from the government initiative, from the principal's initiative, or maybe from the university, initiative, some select group of teachers will be sent and sent for a two weeks, you know, counseling center where they will, you know, learn some basic skill, how to identify the aptitude of the student. And so proper selection can be done. Mm -hmm. point. So, so that means still now, so far, there's been no teachers training in regards to the implementation of the NEP, <laughs> be it from the government side or the university side, there has been no such training? Nothing of that sort has happened, you know, nothing. I'm telling you, you know, say for example, a simple thing is, you know, if you look at UGC guidelines, there is something called SIP, Student Induction Program, 2018-19. It was there from that time. You know, the university is supposed to take initiative and help them, you know, train of how a new student will, you know, you know, it will, 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 will merge into the college system and everything with regard to mentoring and everything, everything. Forget about that time. Now it is more required, but nothing of the sort has been done. We are, NEP is talking about outcome-based learning, mm. outcome-based learning. You ask any teacher, what is outcome-based learning apart from education teacher, okay? They will have no idea about it. Okay, uh, one very, very worrying part out here, which uh, I've, I got from what you said, Professor, is the fact that 
not even a month the teacher was not given even given a month's time to prepare when they they were told that you know by august we'll implement the nep that means in two weeks time on a week's time they have to uh, they have to cope up with the changes in the syllabus exactly. so do you think what are the kind of stress or the mental stress that the teachers have to go to uh, go through in this in this okay uh, let me answer that i think you know uh, uh, the the problem that i have with this hasty implementation i have written uh, a detail about it I am, see, if we are not against NEP, and that has to be told to everyone. Nipersha ayah kajing pentrai kami ke NEP, hari nipersha ayah kajing kerki. Kumbang awak kau kajing bam jakluit kamlong. Kau sentur kan ingben, saya kajing bam jakluit. Borong borong yang ayah kata. Beli dengan ayah dengan ayah nuk saya fi, arlay teli bapi suntu. Beli dengan ayah kerki. If we are hasty in our decision, you will have serious problems. Say for example, I'll tell you the procedure. Procedure is the moment you. Uh, uh, academic council passes anything it has to be minuted yes and once it is minuted that's the final document mm. and once it is minuted you can't change anything mm. unless it goes back to the academic council mm. now i'll give you two examples to suffice why i said it's a hasty decision if you look at the mdc course of first and second semester which is what we have approved mm. it doesn't match i have the minutes here mm. it doesn't match with what osd has sent to the college Imagine something that has been approved by we academic council has been minuted in this document doesn't match with the document because I know what has happened. Ideally, probably the implementation committee has made some fine tuning change. Yes. And by rule, they are supposed to incorporate those in the minutes, yeah. report it to the academic council yes. for ratification. Yes. After that, academic council is supposed to, the university is supposed to notify. Yes. Once it is notified, then only comes the implementation. Here, what has happened? The one who is implementing and changing the MDC course is not talking with the one who is making the minutes. Minutes say something else. Your the implementation team has sent something else to the the OSD has sent something else to the college, which has created a lot of confusion because I don't know as academic council member whenever the next academic council will be held, I will put this question. But the fact remains that when you are in a hurry, you don't follow the procedure. Sometimes what we do is I think which probably even the state government, even the university authority is trying to do is trying to say that I am doing the right thing. But people have forgotten that when you are in the process of doing the right thing, even the procedure has to look right. Otherwise, you may have a good intention, but yeah. it will fail. Now, why I say it is a hasty, that is one example I have given you. The second example that I'll give you is this. Now, when you look at the, the process of entry exit, and he rightly said, after one year, you'll get a certificate course, UG certificate. After two years, you'll get a UG diploma. But it is not that simple. It says you have to do a course, which is, I'll just read it for the audience so this is clear. It has to be, it, they have to complete one internship, stroke vocational, stroke apprenticeship, stroke community and service, stroke field-based learning, stroke minor project of full credit. And that has to be done within three years of their date of admission. Now I give you an example. Say for example, I have finished one year and I want to exit. Or I have finished two years, I want to exit. Where is the time for me to do this internship program? Because I still need 25% of attendance. That nobody have discussed yet. Which means even he exit, he cannot get a certificate after one year because he has not finished his internship. Which means while doing these, an internship is being provided at, at a later stage. At a later stage in, in the fourth semester, uh, in the fifth semester. Now, the problem is somebody thought because that's what I'm saying. The understanding the system is very important. That's why I say you need time. Yeah. Without time, you cannot understand. Most of our teachers have find it difficult to understand because it is too many nitty gritties are involved here. And that's why we said it was a hasty decision because now say, for example, if somebody thought that I will, after completing two years, I'll get a, dip a diploma. He will not get or she will not get unless they wait for next, say, four credit, roughly about, say, 100 marks internship course they have to do or apprentice course they have to do or some kind of project that's another third one which is uh, fourth one rather i would say the multidisciplinary courses that we are offering by rule it says that for running such multidisciplinary courses which we call them as mdcs you have to have at least papers from more than two disciplines and the disciplines are well defined natural and physical science mathematics statistics and computer science library information science and media sciences commerce and management human immunity now let's presume a college in a village 
having only hours. A private college who have only one stream. Uh, use it and start MSc course straight, uh, the master uh, the UG course straight away, they will not be able to do. Because if I'm teaching only arts, because my college is an arts college or the commerce college or only science college, one stream college, I already fail in the MDC. Where is my MDC? If I teach in an arts college, if I teach only arts subject, it is not MDC. In an only science college, if I teach science subject, it is not MDC. If it is a commerce college and I teach only commerce, it is not MDC. So you are defeating the very purpose of it because you at least rule says you have to have at least two disciplines, which means you have to now tell that college that, see, you can't just teach arts. Maybe you have to hire teachers who will cater to, let's say, science subjects, few of them, or say commerce subject. Now in a college, in a village where you have enrollment strength, 100, 200, 300, paying salary to regular teacher or one stream becomes difficult. How will they now hire teachers? Because naturally teachers, nobody will come and teach for free. Kim la aban shu hikai e. Piyap siu tulap, tangban siu tulap, bikini ki bala, don luparo kim la. Namar kim don enrol, because idly speaking, ni ka income jangka college, ka wan na ka fee wa ki yo ni ki khana. Ha ka po sar namar ki khana ki bon, Let's say Pio Kafi Sibon, Pila Bon Sio, and Hapon Nongondong, Pio Chispa, Arspa, Lispa, Kitoru, halfway they will drop out. Pila Mnokin, Eno Stan Samoy. And if you know me, Takada Bernon Ban Prakatba Kitaki College, Kiba Don Tanko Eka Stream, Kin Ranyakanik MDC course, Ki don't come at least two different stream, which means Ki don't come Ban Wad Ikin Hikai, Ban Sio Tulabiki, Bakin Hikai Kiniki subject, Kabom Don Hapokale, which means, in nutshell, if I look at Kiniki College Borokai Abkhagna. Because you don't fall under MDC, you can't have multidisciplinary because you are a single discipline colleges. And that's where the problem lies. The third one, which is equally important, is when you look at this exit entry point, it is left to the college to decide that if somebody exit, when will he come back? Because say I exit in second semester because I have completed my certificate course of two semesters, which is one year. I want to come back. That is the headache of the college, which means college has to always reserve certain seats for those who will decide one fine day that I want to come back and finish my course. How do you address these issues? And that's why you need time. And that's where I think I strongly, strongly, I wish that the government of Meghalaya write a note and says to the vice president that you stop right now. It cannot be done. If I was the education minister, frankly speaking, I mean, I'm not, I'm not getting agitated, but if I was the education minister, I was the CM, I would give a notice to VC that you cannot do it, you stop right now, let it go with the old system, we will see in 2024-2025, once you have prepared all the syllabus, lay it to our table, we'll study, we'll read, we'll address, because you have to take everyone on board. The whole, uh, you know, the, the soul of NEP is everybody has, all stakeholders has to be on board. Otherwise, it will be a failed system and is bound to fail because you don't have the whole information with you. And some college very happily started first or second first semester, not knowing in third semester what kind of training, I'll, what kind of vocational training I'll teach because they have no idea. We knew who have not even decided yet. Mm -hmm. So this is where I say that it is such a serious problem that you can't really put it on the honors to the college and say that, okay, and not only that, Sometimes, you know, we also hear some kind of statement where he say, okay, those who can do, you do it, those who can't, you cannot have same batch that is being admitted in a university system or in our affiliated colleges, cannot have two degree of the same batch with two different system. You I can know. have all of them first semester NEP or no NEP at all, because second semester has already gone with the old system. You can't do anything, you have to wait for them to complain. But the FYUP, if you have to implement, you can't say some college I'll do, some who are not able to do now will take care of it next time. I think that's a very, very flawed argument. I think the whole universe, the whole state government should come and say, you can't do it. But somehow I don't understand. They are all sighing away from the government. <laughs> Our, our parents, or they have voted, they are all 18 plus, they have voted for, for these people to be elected and go to assembly and represent them. If as a government or as opposition or as representative of the different party, if they are not fighting for their fellow people who are there in the village, whether in Garo Hills, Jante Hills, Khasis, I think they are seriously failing. And so we this see, is we, we see, so we see that uh, from the government side, many of them have come in favor of the NEP. Yeah. Like the chief minister himself says that yeah. the NEP, uh, it's the only way, the only option is NEP. And yeah. 
However, he however said that you know he's trying to level the playing field. He said that from the government side, we'll extend whatever support we need to the colleges. So, mm. but then the question here is that um, how can see one one question about the NEP is that you have to have three thousand students or maybe cluster colleges, but mm. in Meghalaya it doesn't work that way. Mm. That we have to consider the distance mm -hmm. between these colleges. How mm -hmm. can you have one college from Maungap? to converge with another college with, from we let's say in Riboy district mm. so how will that work so do you think the NEP when they when they framed the policy they didn't look at all these uh, at all these di dynamics the demograph demographic of each state do they want to you know a blanket yeah. The yeah I understand you know uh, India is a very diverse country and we have got different types of colleges you know throughout the country now if you look at the UGC I think you know the implementation of uh, guidelines for implementation of NEP they have talked about this thing they have addressed the address this thing you know they are aware you know there are single stream colleges now NEP envisage that all colleges should be multidisciplinary that is very clear all colleges should be even you know to the extent they are saying like you know like uh, be at colleges they cannot be standalone college they have to be multidisciplinary so that is another be at colleges are facing problem so they want to be multidisciplinary now to what they have done is you know with regard to the 3000 and everything enrollment <clears throat> small colleges are supposed to form cluster colleges so when they say cluster colleges basically they are saying nearby colleges oh. now in the guidelines they have also given up you know how to run those colleges okay there is a finance yeah. committee and other committees where the principals and everything now if you look at in Meghalaya the way colleges are organized the management and the trustees mm. Do you foresee like you know two colleges or four colleges will come together and share the booty that is the <laughs> finance, <laughs> the money? Okay, that is I mean you know I don't know it is <laughs> a lot to I mean you, everybody can make their own decision with regard to whether actually clustering will actually happen or not. Then in that document also in implementation with regard to the role of the state government, what they have said is you know M NEP should not be implemented like you know across in a blanket way across the board like for everyone. What they said, like, you know, they understand there is, you know, in every district, there are some colleges which are single stream, some are two stream, mm -hmm. some are quite more developed, you know, with regard to infrastructure and f other facilities. So they have suggested something called hub and spoke model. So a particular, in a particular district, in a particular district where some colleges who are better placed with regard to multidisciplinary, they are supposed to act as a hub and other colleges as a spoke. But here I don't see, don't see any mention of this type of you know, policy being implemented or nobody talks about it. It's a blanket type of thing that is going across the thing. Now as far as the role of the state government is concerned, you know, as you, you know, we have not seen. Uh, apart from eloquent you know, <laughs> statements like you know, we'll iron up all the issues, uh, if we don't we'll miss the bus, you know, this type of statement. Uh, nothing concrete has come. What I feel is you know, every college every college you know with uh, with who is joining this NEP without offering a really you know strong resistance of the you know Nehu to enforce this system from this academy is losing an opportunity what I'm trying to say here is you know with the implementation of NEP you know there will be increase in cost of education you know parents will have to shell out even now those who have already been admitted I'm sure many colleges in Shillong especially will have to shell out on three to five four thousand extra for their first semester student if NEP is implemented. The reason is very obvious because you know additional posts has to be created and they have to be paid. Now the government has for a long time stopped you know recruitment and creation of new posts. Now this is the time where all these colleges if they would have stick together and you know ask the government like you know this is our requirement in terms of infrastructure and in terms of manpower and make the government accountable to come with some concrete you know program you know as he said as a mission not as you know some eloquent you know statements then only something could have been done mm -hmm. otherwise you know education as we know in Meghalaya will be beyond the reach of the poor yes. right because it's going to be very expensive then, then, uh, if we have to say this in a practical way yeah. then, Lengi perkhat to shlong ni buon ki college ni buon ki school ka biang kami lai to ni dang la hila dang ni ni khlek lang ki ni ki school ni ki college bere bere ni dang la pani to lai haja to ni perkhat kum shi ki thai nong stoi ni ki thai mai rang ki berang tang ka wei ka college chagaro la se ki ka wei college ki bam la ban pani tang lai haja tang forget lai haja ki ajar ho ki bam la ban pani te ki kum ki to ki ki khat pani ni le kum no kane fi ka long ka jing jar ba bangi bangi ta ka dong ong pi banga persha ba bangi ker ki Long Bunkerki, Nathak Baling and Amte Baleka Sorkar comes to Ho, Baleu, Baleu, Vice Chancellor, whom Soto Yagatanga Soto, because he has to show 
to Delhi that I have done. And, and frankly speaking, I'm a little aghast with even our CM statement by Yongba, we should be number one. I mean, what the fish? I mean, you know, you are bottom and everywhere. On all index of growth, you are the last or second last or third last, almost everywhere. You have no employment, you have no proper road, you have bad transportation, you have bad airport. You want to be the first one to implement this and jeopardize the career of a student because I fully agree with you. you know, the NEP was never modeled to be used in one go. And, and like I said, even in my uh, you know, the, the uh, article that I wrote uh, a few days back in, in Shillong Times that, you know, it was meant to be implemented in a phased manner, making sure that you address these issues that will crop up, like issues of multidisciplinary, issues of not having enough enrollment, how to go about those colleges, how to help them, how will government pitch in, everybody when they are on board, then only you will successfully implement it. Now the hurry that I don't understand is, I mean, many university bearing few, I'm telling you, in South, most of them have not. Indeed, Karnataka, after the BGP lost, Congress said, we'll make our own NEP. We'll not use this at all. We're Simply because they, they don't like the way it has been designed. Now, Kawai Bangi Deban Suthoba, NEP is just a policy. You are supposed to tweak the policy the way you want, based on your local scenario. Yes, it will be a four years undergraduate program, but what will be the content will be what I need here. Why I say, because you know, when you come to the fourth semester, and which is where I, 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 I want to stress very much, because when you come to the fourth semester, and you have what we call the, 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 the scenario of in, in, uh, coming to skill development program, now you have, let's say, you have voca the vocational education and training program, which will be both in, say, fifth and sixth semester. Let's say fourth, we, we, have, we start with, with third and fourth fourth and fifth, sixth mainly. Now, when you look at this, how will the college address this? I am told that some college are planning to hire somebody who will give skill development training. Now, naturally, he or she has to be paid. They can't train the teachers because one teacher suddenly cannot become a carpenter or a tailor person or somebody who, does, who knows how to do welding and this and that. So naturally, you have to hire someone. Now, when you have that kind, imagine a college that doesn't have this facility. How will they implement? And that's why I said you need time to understand that maybe you will need to have a, 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 a chart that is laid out such that people who are authorized to give you the training, because that certificate has to be valid. Furniture, I'm skilled, I can make furniture now. It has to be a valid certificate given by an authorized agency which is certified by the government. Now, we have very few such, including your Don Bosco Youth Center or ITIs and things like that. And ideally speaking, as per the Ministry of Skill Development, in every district, you are supposed to have a skill development centers, mm -hmm. which we still don't have anywhere. We don't have, uh, you open the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, you will see that it's, in the, it's mandated that every district should have a skill development center so that people become skilled. And if it was there, we could have used it in our colleges calling those people because those people will be the authorized person who will be who are really skilled and have been employed and they will be imparting the training so that is one issue why i say that you know the the, the problem that we see is when you are in hurry you are bound to miss a lot of things and yeah. that's why i see no hurry in this program because you know it will be implemented by many university in next, maybe some this year, some next year, some maybe the following year, and so on and so forth. But I'm sure by 2030, all of us will be done away with. In NEO, fortunately, in Academic Council, we said, we all agreed it will be 24, 25 at the most, which means we have enough time. Why not prepare the syllabus? Why not lay out everything for everyone mm -hmm. to understand? address these issues of colleges which are single stream how will you address how that's why i'm little wondering that why government is not pitching in to, to. now this has also created a problem for I, i'll tell you for for some of the colleges where they have started although i would say if you ask me it is an erroneous way of starting the nep in those colleges where they have started now they have started because it seems like they have informed the students that this is a better system now I give you an example so that I drive home my message I'm trying to say. Say for example, you have publicized that you will release a movie called Barbie in next week. And people were offered to buy ticket and they all bought the ticket. Before the release of the movie, you say, okay, I'll not give you Barbie. Maybe Oppenheimer is better. 
you watch Oppenheimer, Barbie is not that good. Naturally, out of curiosity, some have said, yeah, maybe it's really better. So I go. Some say, no, I bought ticket for Barbie. Why should I watch Oppenheimer? I'll watch Oppenheimer when I have to watch it. Now, what happens is here, a, a, a distributor or a manager of his own decided to create this confusion. Let's say, for example, everybody went for, let's say, Oppenheimer instead of Barbie because you bought ticket for Barbie, but they said you have a choice. Naturally, your hall will be full. There will be not enough seat for everyone to sit. In the process, you are creating a chaos. So what I'm trying to say is all the students who has been admitted in first semester has been told based on your prospectus, which is based on the old system. They have no right, I'm saying it, they have no right whatsoever, whether it is student or parent, to say that give me NEP. You were never admitted with NEP. You were admitted with the old system where major subject has been defined. Here in the new system, your major can be altered after third semester or in third semester, which means what major you got can also be altered. Now you can't mix the two system. What I'm trying to say is this, which means they cannot claim it as a right. But now because students are students, say I understand somebody passing class 12, I also was in the same scenario. He was also in the same. We don't have a clear cut understanding of anything. It is what we are fed with, we'll believe. Now, apparently, like we all agree, there are certain goodness about NAP. I, why I'm saying certain goodness? Because we have not implemented, we don't know. Say come four years after now or after say 24, four years after implementing, when you realize that it fails, that time will be the right time to speak whether it was a successful or a failure system. But right now, I said, and I am re-emphasizing this, Kadeka system kaba e kumba ka biang. Ngaong e kumba ka biang kan biang neem ngimtep. Hanre da shupen, namar bunsen ka kalokum ne ba ngi ngi la pulina college, borokha ngi ngi la pulina college. Ngi suto ba teng, don ki por ngi pule ka subject, bengim jopo non kam. Nowhere in your life you have used this knowledge of, of a particular subject or a particular field. You have studied, but you never used it. Here, of course, there is a system. You, do, you are not overburdened with the core subject. You are given with multidisciplinary. Then you are giving with value-added courses. You are giving with, let's say, the, the, uh, the uh, enhanced skill enhancement or the ability enhancement courses and so on and so forth. These are good because apart, most of the time we realize that what you learn, you may not implement in your real life. But here I see a goodness about the NEP is they are not emphasizing only bookish knowledge. They are talking about something beyond just the book. And that's what I said in the beginning. I like the system. I don't like to follow a system when I don't know the rule of the game fully. And right now, I don't know. It's, on, it's similar. The example that I've given you, it's not only that they offered, instead of Barbie, they offered Oppenheimer. When they entered inside the hall, they said, I'll show you only one fourth of the movie. One fourth of the movie will be still be released. It is under the production. I'll show you only one fourth. One fourth, I am telling you the structure, <laughs> the storyline is like this. It sounds good, but I have not yet, you know, uh, they shoot that movie. So I'm showing you only one fourth. Episode, that's, will uh, episode will come. And that's where the problem lies. It means you are actually fooling people, I'm saying. You are actually fooling the public, fooling the parent. That you have a system. Now, if I was a parent of a student who is going to college, I will ask the college management, tell me what you are going to teach my kids in third semester. Show me what you are going to teach. The college will have no answer because Nihu has no answer. We have not even discussed. It has, the syllabus has to be decided at the BOS, Board of Studies of Respective Department. It has come to the school board. Then it will go to academic council, then it will be discussed, approved, notified, and then only it will come to college again. So what I'm saying is, having the kirke come long. kirke pin guarantee I give you. I mean, on this program, I can tell you with the guarantee that this system will fail if you are in hurry. And that's why I'm hell-bent against this hasty implementation, no matter who is saying what, as a teacher, I will never put my student or my kid to study in this kind of course when I don't know what is going to be taught in third semester, fourth semester, fifth semester, sixth semester. Forget about seven and eight, where you will have the four years uh, course as such. You are not even basic. I'm saying the three years that we are going to do, you don't even have an outlay of what you are going to teach. What will be the content? What is that skill development, vocational training? What kind of training? Whether you will teach me small, small carpentry work, or I will be taught enough skill that when I have a degree with skill, I'm here, not here. Because if I have to become a mystery, I don't need to study. I straight away go and learn mystery in, in some welding shop, some furniture shop. That's good enough, right? But if I'm earning a degree with skill, means that I am little above the average because I am now a graduate with skill development, with vocational training, with value-added course, with the ability enhancement courses. This is what I'm trying to say. 
So we, we know that there's been a lot of uh, people who are in favor and those who are in the who are opposing the NEP, the implementation of the NEP from this current year. So one of them is the HYC. Of course, they have explained about the inherent problems of the implementation from this current year. But interestingly, your former colleague and uh, the uh, present general secretary of the United uh, Democratic Party had stated, and I quote, he said, we cannot fall behind and be too late in anything. And if we want to uplift the education sector in our state, the NEP has to be implemented. So what do you have to say? Okay. Do you want me to respond? No, I think let him okay, respond let, let, first. Uh, <laughs> Professor respond. No, you see, uh, <clears throat> as he has rightly pointed out, you know, we are talking about a policy which is yet to be implemented. Over a period of time, you know, in social media, what has come is, you know, the one with more social media presence, mm -hmm will almost mm. give the judgment you know and declare a policy as success mm. and give them five star even before the policy is implemented so that is happening you know most of the time now <clears throat> uh, there is an apprehension like you know if you don't implement uh, any, uh, this four year degree undergraduate program uh, as they have said quote unquote miss the bus and you know so in the interest of the student uh, they say that you know we need to implement and we cannot lag behind the whole country is implementing and so and so on and so forth okay now <clears throat> and there i mean the arguments of you know if you these people who has been i mean the groups you know various people who are of course in the interest of the student uh, supporting NEP implementation have said like you know it can be as ridiculous as you know if we don't follow NEP then our student will have to sit out one more year like you know that's that's what they have said and some people even gave like you know if you if you don't implement then you know at the end when our student graduate, graduate maybe by that time you know UGC may change the requirements and our student will suffer so these are all you know you know I mean probabilities and you know assumptions that we make so since you have asked this question so I will also make a you know very <laughs> try to make a you know educated guess you can say with regard to what uh, what uh, with regard to my argument no why I feel like you know even if we don't implement a uh, four-year degree program as far as NEP is concerned uh, in this academic session we will not suffer that much first thing I'd like to say here is you know <clears throat> not all the universities all over the country is you know implementing NEP from this year mm -hmm. so if you you know there are you know certain things like you know if you say uh, say around 100 universities are going to implement NEP but there are you know more than 560 yeah. 500 plus you know higher education institutions and uh, Professor Jagadish Kumar chair, you know, who is the chairperson of the UGC has right, said that you know as some of the institution need more time to switch to the four year mode so they will do it later. So it is given, like you know, it's not necessary that the entire yeah. country on blanket mm. from yeah. tomorrow is NEP compliant. Not yeah. necessarily. That is yeah. the first thing, uh, which I want to say. So we will not be the only one who will not be implementing NEP from you know, uh, from this academic session, right? Uh, I don't want to talk about you know Karnataka and you know West Bengal. Otherwise, it will be something like a, a state which is governed by a non central government, uh, government which is you know not in, not, not in power in the center. So that will be totally different. So what I'm trying to say here is most of the uh, higher, education, higher education institutions are not going to implement NEP from this. They are given some time. There's one thing. Now we have been talking about this four-year degree program. That means now our students have to spend four years, right? Uh, that's how it is being marketed. You know? But I feel like, you know, for all per practical purpose, this is not four-year degree program. For most students, 90% plus students, it's a three-year degree program. Exactly. It's three years degree program. It's basically, you know, the fourth year is basically for those people who want to take academics or want to do research mm. as their career option, they will only go for fourth year. Now, majority of our students who will want to sit for competitive exam, maybe a clerical grade exam or send, want to sit for UPSC, you know, civil service program uh, exam, they will opt out after mm. third year. And, you know, if necessary, they will sit one year and prepare for competitive exam rather than, you know, go for fourth year because it is pointless. Right. So, first thing you have to keep in mind, you know, that basically for all purpose, for most students, it is three years program. So, after three years, you'll be given a degree. Okay. Uh, you will degree with major. So, if you want to do the fourth year, you will get degree with honors or degree with research. There are the two options. As I said, it's basically designed to hone your research skill if you want to go for research or you want to become academicians, you want to teach in higher education, this one there. So, I think a minor percentage only will go. Now, having said that, so if a person, you know, opts out of the third year, will he be at disadvantage to the guy who is in the fourth year? Mm -hmm. Now, I'll tell you, in NEP also, at present, even now, they have an option whereby if you want to do a PG course, like, you know, I want to do MA or mm -hmm. MSc or BSc, you know, I can, after third year, sit for CUT exactly. and join a two-year PG course. 
Like normal. Like normal. Right. Okay. Now, what is the advantage of the fourth year? The advantage of the fourth year is they are saying is that you will get lateral entry in PG. That means you will have to spend only one year PG course. Right. And for that, you know, the university is required to man maintain a supernumerary seat of 10% of the <coughs> capacity. Say, for example, you know, zoology in, you know, have got 50 seats. So, they will have to maintain 10% of that as a supernumerary seat for those people who want to get lateral entry. So, it will be 5. So, now, just imagine in the state of Meghalaya, you know, you have got so many students who will go in for fourth year. And when they apply for lateral entry, there are only 5 seats. So, will you prefer to sit for the fourth year and go for super set or will you go for opt out for third year and sit for a CUT and you know, you know, uh, apply for the course? Naturally, you know, you will go for the third year, right? Another thing you have to keep in mind, the in, in new has made it very clear. In fact, you know, I think you know one of the member of the curriculum committee has said that very few colleges in Meghalaya will be actually, be, you know, fit to op, I mean, offer fourth year. That means all the college will offer three years only. Mm. Now, because they said we have made stringent requirement for the fourth year. One of the requirement is that in the to have a fourth year, the college the department should have at least two teachers who are su supervisor for PhD scholars. So at present, none of the college is having you know faculties who are supervisor of the PhD student. Mm. The reason is it's not because they are not qualified; they are not interested. Nihu ordinance does not <laughs> allow college teachers to become supervisor for PhD student. So now, if you really want, intend that, you know, a college should open fourth year, then you should change the ordinance of the NEHU and allow teachers from colleges to be a super, supervisor. What, is it okay? So what I'm trying to say here is this big talk of, you know, if you miss the bus and this and that, for all practical purposes, it is three years course. I, when I did my graduation, you know, it was in 80, 84, 85, you know, my friends did BCom pass course. It was two years. Mm. So, become pass. Some applied in police, some got jobs, some went to B. Ed and everything. And I opted for third year honors because I wanted to become a teacher. I wanted to do PG. And you know, out of a class of 100, only 10 or 5 were there who doing honors. Got I put you? Mm. So, basically for all purpose, though it is a four year degree, four year degree, four year degree, most of the college in Meghalaya will offer, you know, three year degree. Mm. And the fourth year because it, for most colleges, it will not be financially sustainable also because you know, you'll get very less student and you'll have to have specialized professors there. If you are offering chemistry, then you cannot imagine the expenditure on, you know, chemical that you'll have to have. And every time Nihu comes or someone comes to, you know, give you affiliation, they will have a separate labs and everything. It will be like a white elephant. Mm -hmm. Unless and until, of course, you want to go for NAC accreditation, then you can show that we are also having a white elephant here and get a better NAC score. Otherwise, it is not financially viable. So, this four year degree program that we are saying, okay, you'll have to wait for one year, somebody says, I find it, how can they come up with this type of st statement, no? So, we have to really think about it. So, if we talk about uh, now um, the Chief Minister, uh, Konrad K. Sangma had said that um, we need to collaborate and coordinate. Uh, there is a need for coordination and collaboration among all stakeholders mm. for this program, or for this policy to be successful. Mm. And he also mentioned that stakeholders, money teachers and, and, and principals will all be taken on board. Mm -hmm. My question to you is, mm -hmm. have the government called you for talks? Have the government sought your suggestions, your views on these, the problems, the challenges that, that, that the state, the, the teachers are going to face while implementing this policy? If it has, what are the kind of suggestions that you have given the government? And if not, why do you think the government is taking its time to, to call them for talks? Okay, I think maybe uh, let me try then probably I'll leave that question to him. Now, you know, you asked some time back about the UDP General Secretary making that kind of statement. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, by the way. We joined Nehu the same day. But, you know, it, it doesn't surprise. I don't think it surprises anyone. Basically, what NPP says, UDP will follow. So for me, that really doesn't surprise me. Now more so because I'm a little worried. See, sometimes we have to leave politics and, and be a little more rational. But in this case, I would say he has tried to uh, add little politics on the rationalization, which is not nice. Simply because he was also present in the academic council where we have discussion. And he was with us till the 10 p.m. time that we had. And it was very, very thorough and very, very clear that it cannot be implemented in 2023. It was accepted by and large in the House. That's why there was no ruling. I'm saying it categorically, 
Perai e naka Academic Council bangin pentrai kam ya ke NDP nado 23 hanre ngi ong dangi long wan pentrai kam ngin pentrai kam hadin arpsa apsan hanre ka jing mi kum kata ka ketin pade na general secretary jong NDP it doesn't surprise me simply because you know uh, because one of course there is a lack of understanding i would say seriously there is a lack of understanding is what is the spirit of NDP if the spirit of NDP is to hmm. say yes man to someone <laughs> because someone overrides. See, why I personally get agitated when a, a vice chancellor or somebody says that it's my power or my prerogative to implement and not the academic council. I think he has not read our ordinance clearly. Mm -hmm. And as somebody who has been in EU for the last 20, 21 years, I can, I can say it on his face that we are wrong. It is not. If that was the, this is not a postal department. This is what I want to tell him sometime if he give me a chance. This is not a postal department that you decide a rule from there and post office here will implement. This is a university we established through an act of parliament. And our, I'm giving you a very clear example so that people don't misquote me. See, 7th pay came. 7th pay came for all other central government employees, they straight away implemented. For us, academic council has to first adopt it. Mm. UGC 7th pay, we cannot simply take unless we have adopted it and make changes in our relevant ordinance. Then only we are paid. The, why? Because we are not a government office. Mm. We have our own statutory provision. And that's why I am very agitated when somebody takes away my right. It's the right of an academic council member to decide. And we have decided that it will not be implemented in 23, in 23, 24. At, at the most, he he knows, and that's why he's not finding easy to come to a Kenya Council. What will he say? We cannot ratify his decision. It's his headache. If somebody has sat in his office and decided off his own to implement NEP, it's your, you have the fun. It's not the Kenya Council, and we are the one who are supposed to do it, and we will always do it. And that's why I say, why it is so important? Because it's a collective decision. A curriculum like NEP, when you're going to implement, it's a serious business. That's why we deliberated from morning till 10 p.m. If it was so, we leave it to him, sit in the VC's office and say then implement, I would be more than happy not to waste my time in academic council. But what I feel is, this is the right of the academic council. Nobody, I'm saying, nobody based on our acts, statutes and ordinance, nobody can infringe on the right of academic council. It is the sole prerogative of academic council when it comes to academic policy. And NEP implementation in total is a policy decision. When it should be implemented, how it will be implemented will be decided by academic council. And that's why we say that it was wrong on his part. Now, coming to his, uh, you know, doing politics and so on. See, our government is... is simply trying to buy time and this is what I, I don't understand buying time for what if you say like he said rightly you know goody goody words don't work that call collective and uh, stakeholders where is the stakeholder i don't think maybe he will answer the 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 invitation from the government certainly we as teachers body uh, because i also uh, although i'm not here as president Nehuta, but as teachers body we have not had we did have some kind of indirect interaction and where we made it very clear that come day academic council bar raya ke ne bagin penan kam ka arful arsal namar ngim don kam ban ka ong bi ngim don kam ban pen kemen le ne pen susi yono yono ngi don kam ban sngap ya ka jing don kam jingi khana jingi hapo ga jalla me galya we need to understand what they require and how best we can place them as a member of academic council i will be the last one to have a haphazard way of placing the NV for the general public of Meghalaya. No, I'll be the last one. I will never agree because I like to work in a structure whereby tomorrow when people question, they will question the Academic Council. And that's why I said, let this be on record that they cannot question the Academic Council because Academic Council have not decided such a hasty implementation. If at all government wants to really come and talk, they have to come and talk in a structured manner. They tell us concrete, what do you want? I want this, 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 this. Can you do it within a span of, let's say, one year? If they say yes, go ahead. If they say no, you don't do it. You can't goody goody. That's why I say, you know, it's very nice to say nice word around your people where they will clap and so on. But the reality of the thing is, you have to be serious in your business. And education is a serious business. We were at one point of time very uh, a renowned state when it comes to considering ourselves as education hub. From entire northeast and all over India, people used to come and study. Today, I don't think it is the right kind. Today, we can very safely say that we are really not among the top 10 or top 
50 maybe uh, areas as far as the uh, study education uh, opportunities are concerned simply because we have ignored and it is the same person I will say is the same person who never said a say, single word when we were deteriorating under the old system and that's why I said I don't rely with politicians uh, language or their statements simply because they make statement when it suits them and when it when it comes to core why don't you take the government to the map you say that you have make a mess of NEP, I withdraw your support. Can they dare to do it? They will never do. Simply because you scratch my back, I scratch yours. You are happy, I am happy. Let's let the state go to hell. I mean, this is what I'm sorry to use <laughs> that kind of term. But this is precisely what I feel as a common man when I look at the way the one who's supposed... An education minister cannot be callous. A chief minister cannot be callous. A vice minister cannot be callous. You have to make sure that the interest of the state of Meghala is put right on the top. Which means even if you have one college with difficulty, Please address that first before you implement it. And that's my, my, my belief. And I, for all times to come, I'll believe that you can't have. Don't come here, NDP, jubot jasti. That you put it through my throat, you, you know, push it down my throat and in my intestine. I will have indigestion problem, you know, because I didn't want it. And that's precisely where I'm saying that it is important for all of us to understand and particularly because we we don't have power we are we are have power only when we discuss in academic council outside the academic council we can't i have no statutory power as a as a teacher to to override anything unless it comes to academic also as a body we can decide something but right now at least this education department of meghalaya the education minister the chief minister i would request that they should straight away venture into nehu and say Show me the outlay of what you are going to offer to my students. We are confusing my students. Some students who have started the NEP syllabus, they are liking it, but they don't know what is lying in third semester. It is a mess. And I'm telling you why it is a mess, because they are students. Their parents may be uneducated. Their parents may be educated. They don't know. They are more than happy to get a seat in the college, first thing first. Second comes that me as a teacher or we as a teacher or I if I was a vice chancellor I would say that actually I concern me I'm a professor of university I cannot be callous in my attitude my attitude should not look only my decision should be look right but the procedure to implement that decision also should be rational should be acceptable if not come back to discussion the best place is you come back to agreement council ideally speaking if 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 sensible head works this is the right time for us to start Keep it in abeyance. You go with the old system because you have admitted students. No college can claim. I'm telling you again. No college can claim that I will implement NEP 20 because you have not offered. Yeah. I, I have the prospectus of all these colleges with me. If they want, I can show them. Where they clearly said, this is a three years uh, degree course where you will be having measure. This is the fee. This is the subject combination, blah, 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 consisting of six semesters. This is a FYUP, which is a four years course. Now, which means you are actually at some point of time, I think some colleges are also fooling the students. Students are liking it, thinking that, oh, teachers have said that there is a lot of promise in this NEP. I said, promise is there, but promise has to be fulfilled. When it will be fulfilled? Only when the one batch will come out. Maybe four years, five years down the line, when the first batch comes out, and we look at their result and look at the quality of students, I'm saying. Ladaki long shisha ki ki ba, la tubit shisha tanka degree. Because most of the time, degree doesn't give you a job. What gives you a job is what you carry in your back, in your IQ, in your brain, in your intellectual thinking. Which means if we assess those group of students who will pass out, let's say, four years, five years down the line, and we say that, yes, look at this and look at the earlier system, I think this is better. Then only we will say that this has worked. Right now, I said, I am happy. I'm skeptical, though, that because you are trying to put it hastily hastily putting out things for the public consumption will not work okay and and we know that the mcta and the state uh, sorry the mcta and the vice chancellor of who are at loggerhead over the issue yeah, yeah. and with the state government uh, there are so much of hopes that the state government will intervene which it is doing actually mm. what i want to say is that do you think there is a, a way where the state government can come to a meeting point between the vc and uh, nehu authorities and the mcta where you know they can sit down and like sir said that uh, list down the points the challenges that you're going to face this year if you implement from this year all of that talks has the government initiate such kind of a conversation a communication a three way talks between uh, between the three three bodies okay uh, first thing no I with regard to <coughs> this term, you know, loggerhead, you know, 
uh, logarithm will be happening, you know, if there is some doubts, you know, and some mm. ambiguity with regard exactly. to certain concepts or something like, you know, it's not very clear. But we at MCT are very clear that the notification that was, as he has been, he has gone at length to say, like, you know, it has never decided in the academic council. So, the notification which has set the ball rolling with implementation of NEP from the academic session 23-24 uh, in all affiliated colleges is defective. Mm. That's what we are saying. Right. We are teachers representative of, you know, in the academic council and we were there. So, it has never been passed. So, it's a defective notification. So, we are asking you to withdraw that notification. So, there is no doubt, you know, in my mind, if you can prove as otherwise, mm. we are ready to apologize. Because the minutes, you know, the proceedings, as he said, mm. proceeding also doesn't mention no more this defective thing. Mm. So, he is, you know, not listening. Right, the BC is, you know, as far as I can say, even not recognizing the ex existence of the MCTA. He, we have never, we have asked him, but he is not even calling us. Now, the uh, with regard to the government, you know, we as a joint body with um, Principals Council and MCTA had met the uh, <coughs> met the Chief Minister and the Education Minister, subsequently the Education Minister, and apprised him of the our apprehension with regard to implementation of the, you know of the NEP from the academic session, you know, 23-24 and we said we would like to defer it because we were not ready. So, up after that, we have not received any communication from the government or from BC or anyone. So, at present, you know, with, uh, with, uh, with this whole thing, you know, issue, our fight is with principle. I have been telling you from the very beginning that our fight is with principle. We will not allow, you know, a defective notification to you know be legalized or legitimized you know and said that yes this is the right thing and you know go ahead because as i have said time and again you know this will reflect very badly on the entire stakeholders yeah. of Meghalaya. as i have said time and again let me repeat the usually held notion that we northeast especially from Meghalaya, we take you know things very easy we don't want to you know you know we are very comfortable with our life yeah. and anybody can and, and anybody can get away with whatever they want now, if this will set a very wrong precedence, you know, this attitude will not work. So, that is what we are saying. Now, that's my position, you know, we have not been invited by the government or the new people, uh, new uh, administration. That is one thing. So, we are sticking with that. Today, we are meeting to review uh, in the evening to review our stand. That is what we are going to do. We have got an extended executive meeting. Now, <clears throat> one thing I want to say here is, you know, mm, time and again, we have to understand, you know, this standoff, you know, between the uh, NEHU and the MCT is going on and naturally, you know, uh, parents are concerned, students are concerned and, you know, everybody seems to be in the interest of the student and except, you know, we, the teachers are being a huddled, you know, a very selfish group of teachers, you know, who are always bothered with our pay scale and our welfare and we are not bothered with the, you know, in the interest of the education or the interest of the student. It's totally wrong. On the contra uh, contrary, we are very much concerned with the welfare of our student, right? <clears throat> in the, it is in the interest of the student that we are asking you to defer. I'll give you one example. Huh? Why in the interest of the student, we want that the NEP should be deferred by at least a year. Now, in the beginning itself, I've said one of the cornerstone of the NEP as it's being implemented now um, is the internship, mm -hmm. right? You know, as uh, he mm -hmm. has rightly men men mentioned that internship is mandatory. In NEP, internship is mandatory. If somebody wants to exit the system after the first year, he will give in a certificate, right? But he will have to do an in internship of four, four credit. If you want to exit after <coughs> the second year, you will get diploma, but you will have to do internship mm -hmm. of four credit. Mm -hmm. If you want to exit after three years, you will give in a degree, but you will have to do a mandatory internship of four credit. Mm -hmm. Now, internship is very much interesting, right? So, now, <coughs> but Implementing internship at the undergraduate level is a big problem, right? You have got, you know, PG courses like, you know, we, I've got a friend in, you know, Tura campus. He is teaching with, you know, agriculture, marketing or something is there, um, MBA degree. And he has got few students, a handful of students, you know, PG courses. And he's finding difficult to get internship for them in a proper, mm -hmm. you know, internship providing, providing organization. Keep in mind, Nihush or, you know, the higher education institution should recognize an internship providing organization. I mean, they have been recognized and they are the one who are qualified to give you internship and the certificate given by them only will be recognized. So, at an undergraduate level, we have got thousands of students, right? Where will they get internship? That's the first thing. Now, it is a very difficult issue. No matter, it's a challenge. But they found an easy way out. What they have done is, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, 
uh, they have also said you know if you say community engagement community engagement is also qualifying as internship then they said minor project also will qualify mm. as mm. internship now that is very interesting when you say that okay fine i understand this one but you need to have a guidelines with regard to who will monitor the internship and how it will be evaluated mm. guidelines is not there at all so in the absence of the guideline what will happen is all the colleges all the colleges across meghalaya after first year if you are doing first year and you want to drop out you are supposed to do internship so they have got slash 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 yeah. or 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 community engagement internship or minor project now what will constitute a minor project no details mm. okay so what will happen you will do cut paste from the internet and do an assignment and submit maybe do chat gpt will do your assignment and you'll get four credit now are, are you understanding what i'm trying to say because in the absence of guidelines so now after first year i am going out with an internship with this chat gpt mm. <laughs> generated you know this one and it's for four credit mm. one credit is of 15 hours huh? you have to have an engagement of 15 hours so four credit you have to understand mm. so if that is the quality of internship that you are going to give to our student we are very much against it before you implement that at least sit down and think like you know have a proper guideline how you will develop this internship program if you are saying community engagement what will constitute mm -hmm. a community action who are those people who be recognized as you know certifying this one what is the process of monitoring and evaluating mm -hmm. you may say like it's a thing which i'm just talking like that there is a draft guidelines you just have to click you mm -hmm. will get a ugc draft guidelines for internship ki don ki ni ki ki ni ki mat ki ba nitty gritty yom fi ang mo kibala ban kata it can change the entire system these are small things these are doable you know another thing you know another allegation which has come to mct and you know people like us is that you know uh, if you say everything should be perfect mm. then only implement mm. nep it will never happen mm. you are people are asking everything to be perfect ready then only implement no as we go will change when we face the problem this one change no understand we are not going to throw the child into the water okay. and if you learn to swim fine if he drowns die no we will not do that at least you know give him a baby pool mm. and learn swimming no so you know these are small small neat things which can be done in a year mm. you know sit down and exactly. if you have a thought process you can be done so that at least we'll have a proper system to implement mm. otherwise and you know this is one thing okay you will find it very interesting if you allow me time i'll say one thing okay <clears throat> as we have already said that nep is being implemented top down not down up mm. so that means you know at present in our school level especially in the class 12 level it is already still old course so we have got arts science and commerce mm -hmm. we have got science student who are ready to you know sit for je and nit they have got thorough combination of maths physics they have got detail you know they are ready to become doctors and engineers mm -hmm. we have got commerce who can go for you know the foundation course for ca and you know all these things okay so we have got this one so this old system now in nep what they have done is they are allowing one paper major one paper minor the major will be your paper let's say you want to take education as honors you can take minor can be you know history political science economics in the first semester there's a minor and you can go in the second semester minor in the third year third semester sorry not second year that is third semester if you want second to convert year. your minor into major you can do mm -hmm. right now what they have done is since say for example i am a commerce student right i take major commerce but i have got a liking for english too i've got writing english this one so i can opt minor english so in the second year also i will take something related with offered by english department in the third year if i want i can become english honors right now the english department have got a major english and a minor english which i am taking mm. right they have a major english and minor english which i am taking in second semester in the third semester this one right i have to go now what will happen this guy who's opted for english is from class 12 arts english mm. he has got thorough knowledge so naturally in the first semester he is supposed to do little bit more advanced no well some addition of knowledge has to take place so naturally his syllabus of english in the major will be little bit up higher than what he learned in class 12 then in uh, second semester then in the third semester he'll go but i am from commerce i have no idea of english i'll have to a fundamental of english right fundamental of english then when i go i will be still behind him no so there's no parity mm. so what they said was very nicely that in the first semester and the second semester we'll only teach fundamentals no addition like you know whatever this one fresh because you know so the english of major english and minor english will be same paper okay it will be basic fundamental mm -hmm. second year also basic fundamental third year only uh, third semester second only semester. it will change first semester second semester the, because to uh, allow you to change right mm -hmm. 
Now what has happened is, but the guy here in the college is not NEP, no. NEP is not happening in the school, high secondary level. Mm. So this guy, let's say for example, botany, right. He has done, you know, he is from life science, so he's got zoo and everything. He's ready to become a doctor, like, you know, he comes and joins botany honors. It will be fundamental, basic. And the minor also will be fundamentals only. There's so no addition of knowledge. Huh? Second year, fundamentals. Second oh, sorry, semester. second semester, fundamentals. This one is a fundamentals. He will not learn anything, right? Okay, he will not learn anything because he is learning less than what he learned in class 12 actually. So he will not learn anything. After first year, uh, after first year, second semester finish, he wants to give up his studies. He will be given a certificate on the basis of chat GBT as generated assignment without any value and no addition of knowledge. From his class 12 onward. Yes, it is a waste of year. It's okay. So what we suggested was, okay, let us keep this lateral entry of changing minor into main, major in the third semester for abeyance for some time. Because, you know, we don't have a cluster which is NEP compliant. It is still the old system. Yes. So let's make the minor as a minor paper, which is be fundamental and honors, I mean, major as really, you know, little bit addition to what they learn in class 12. First semester, uh, first semester, second semester also do like that and don't allow this changing of minor into uh, major for some time because now this people in the class 11 and 12 are not you know ready you know because this is old system. The moment you know NEP will come from school, school, school then class 12 also will become NEP compliant then you can change and allow no problem. But they said, no, it's not done like that, you know, it has to be fundamental because otherwise you are not giving, you are going against the spirit of NEP because they allow multidisciplinary. points teachers training but financial implication on the colleges. teachers training, Bengin hikai, bengin ingin ingin shim dah ni kawe ka kerukum hikai. Ini belong kalong sudden shift from your merit base uh, merit base to your skill base uh, mode of teaching. So bukan lagi naya kaki shim cing eh nama arba the pi orang pin ait teachers training. Okay, train no ya pi dah dan life pengut kini hikai train no shif pengut bikin ni kani kaki kam. Teh cibur dan kini hikai kiba kiba kibla katu kat ni senam kibla dan sekolah hatu kitre mau ban ban lek biang kini melong kini melak shukin ban ada. I think both of us are the same that why we need time. We need time simply to understand these issues that who will teach what. Say for example, if you already have a college with the major is defined. These are the teachers. This teacher used to take this paper, this paper. Now you have only one major, one minor. Basically workload has come down but you have increased through other courses like AEC and, and, and the, the skill development and so on and so forth. Now, and vocational and so on, and, and particularly the MDC. Mentah kalau kamu ni kan, lada ki no hikai, ki juo ki no hikai, shubo ki hap hikai no hikinai ki course, shubo. Naturally, they are not trained. Ki kam namar ka boro si kata boi ki la hikai, they have either trained to teach commerce, economics, biochemistry, zoology, botany, maths, physics, whatever. Suddenly you tell them to teach something else. I, I don't think they will say, for example, even if you have to teach a simple like library component, which is there, let's say in MDC, library and its implication and so on. That teacher will not be able to do it simply because he, you have to hire somebody who is trained in that field, yeah. which means you are adding a financial constraint. First, you cannot teach, uh, train a teacher beyond a limit. He, he has been trained, he is master, PhD, let's say, in a particular field. Mm. To tell him that no, you have to teach elementary science. Mm. Well, being a commerce teacher or a arts, you know, a history teacher, you tell elementary physics or you know, library science a little bit, the whatever MDC courses that we have in physics, you will have problem. Mm. Simply because you, I don't know who will impart then training first thing first. Maybe some modality has to be. That's what I'm saying. Why you need time? Maybe you have because you cannot overnight appoint teachers, one cater to all the courses that is offered, let's say 10 different courses of MDC. You can't. You have to manage within your resources for which you need to do an exercise that how much I can cater and which one we will be offering because it will vary from college to college out of the 10 that you have, not necessarily that all college will take all 10. There will be choice because you have to choose one that out that of it. Time. That requires time. That is one part where financial implication will come which means you are now going to burden the institution that 
I cannot teach because I'm not from that field. You please appoint someone else. In the meantime, because we have suddenly started first semester, suddenly we'll start second semester. We are not ready. Mm, we don't exactly. have time. So that no, is one problem. We, we know that Miglai is plagued by different, all these uh, systematic problems that we see. And NEB talks about getting rid of uh, root uh, learning, exam-centric approach, and all these uh, lack of infrastructure in schools yeah. and all that. But how do you expect a child... Uh, let's see, how do you expect uh, a child who for the last 10 years been, uh, has been subjected to a conventional way of, of learning, exam approach, and now suddenly you tell him or her that you, know, you have to change the entire thing, even from a student's perspective, do you think this is wise? Uh, no, I think, see, um, uh, see, change will happen. I mean, let's all be fair. I think change has to come and we have to be ready to embrace change. Mm. I'll take, give you an example. When we were in degree, it was a yearly exam. It was degree year. There was no semester system. So Suddenly, semester system came. People got used to it. Initially, it happens. With all systems, there will be hiccups. So I'm sure those students also have to be mentally prepared. That's why I said, you need, why do you need time? You need time to orient them that from home, from whatever resources they can. You orient them that, see, coming next year, this is how things are going to be. It will not be the way you have studied in your, say, plus two level or 11, 12, whatever you have. You will have to adopt and adopt quickly because semester is, we say six months, but barely it is three and a half months. Minus Saturdays, Sundays and holidays, you will get barely maybe mm. three, three and a half months. So that is one. Yeah. Yeah. critical thinking. Yeah, yeah. No, they, they teach about critical thinking. Exactly. school, mm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, this will be a challenge. No, this will be a challenge. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's okay. I just wanted to cite yeah. an instance. No, yeah. here. You see, what you're saying, critical thinking, you yeah. know, the way application of knowledge mm. and all those things, the application part is very interesting. <clears throat> uh, earlier, no, uh, when we were in COVID, like, and everything was online. And in the academic council, we had a problem, like, you know, we wanted to have online exams, okay. And as you know, online exam is not an exam at all. Like, basically, the one who is having all the resources will be top the exam, right. Mm. The guy who is very sincere and honest and God-fearing will get the lowest mark. That is what everybody mm. knows. So we had this problem. So, you know, the Srivastava, I think that was the mm, yeah. earliest. Thing. Mm. He said, you know, we are having problems and everything. We said, okay, you can do one thing. You set questions which are application type, no? And he said that if I set a question, nobody will, will answer. So he was basically talking about what, you know, if you have seen IGNU question paper, mm. right? If you have done, anyone who has done IGNU, you know, and they have study material and mm. set for the test, mm. those questions are, you know, application oriented. Mm. You will not get in textbook, mm. right? You will not, you know, find it in, you know, just by mm. doing. I don't know if Chat GPT will do it now mm. because yeah. that is totally different exactly. ball game now. But to a large extent, you know, it is application oriented. Right. So he was th saying, like, you know, we will have that type of questions. Now that again, we pointed out there also that when we set the syllabus, when we set the pattern of questions and everything, we have already said this is the pattern of questions. Uh, describe this, this. What are its features, advantage, disadvantage? That's what we are asking. Yes. Now suddenly, just because it's COVID. They are sitting at home with mm. this type of question, they will not be able to answer and it will not be okay. Tomorrow the students will be yeah. up in arms. Mm. So you are rightly pointing out and it, we go to the same basic questions, you know, right. it should be down up, right. not top down. Right. So from the bottom, if we from very small, you know, uh, when we are a child, we are very small, the critical thinking will go and everything, the way answers is being asked, you know, students are supposed to frame their own questions and uh, give the answer. Mm. Then I think, you know, we will not have any problem in that. So it has to be no, not top down, it has exactly. to be down up. Down up, that, yes. should, that yes. should be exactly. the foundation. Yes. I mean, yes. I don't know why we're, we're, we're planning to implement yeah. top to bottom. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, we'll leave that to the, to the experts. Yeah. So, but now if you talk about the financial implications, there are many colleges, like you said, those are not supported by the government, the deficit and the ad hoc colleges and the schools in the colleges. Yeah. So now these, already they're having problem with the payment of salary to the mm -hmm. teachers and every, after every few months you see teachers coming to the streets demanding for the salaries. Now, th isn't this an extra, extra burden on the educational institutions to meet all those uh, uh, requirements set by the NEP, like your new facilities, infrastructure? How do you think the government can go about it? In yeah, the okay. yeah, I think this is the most uh, serious part of the whole business, I would say. You know, mm -hmm. uh, see, uh, we have to understand that our education sector is bad. Bad, but there are some uh, good Samaritans who have started, let's say, a college in a remote place. Sometimes shelling out their own money or sometimes is the church, sometimes is the shnong or whatever. And sometimes some rich man is there, so he 
starts a college to think that maybe I'll recover it from fees and so on, whatever be the case. Now, you know, these colleges are constrained. Now, what I fear is when you do hasty implementation, you are even going to kill that bare minimum that a particular mm. small town in Garo Hills, Giant Hills, or East Kassi Hills, or Riboy district. There might be a one college in the total district, which is run by, let's say, a private entity, or which is not government, let's say, not supported by government. Now, that's where government should pitch in. And that's where I was looking for that. You know, once you lay everything on the table, government should be able to say that, okay, this college doesn't have resources, we are going to support. So that you don't kill the college. Why I'm saying? Because if going by whatever is written in the NEP document and you don't tweak it mm. to suit your requirement, even the minimum that we are getting from this college to enlighten our folks in the villages or in the small town will be now actually they will be debarred from getting this because you may say, okay, you are one stream college, you shut it down. Mm. Now yeah. that we cannot do. That is like killing a system. What we can do is we can only upscale it. We can't go down. If I have a college and it is not doing well, I cannot say you shut it down. I will say you improve. So that, you know, you cater to the need of the local area. And that local area may comprise, you know, 30, 40, 20 villages whom you are supporting with your bare minimum fee and, of course, bare minimum salary of the teacher. Naturally, a teacher who is not paid well has to look for other options. And now when you have this kind of scenario coming in where government don't seem to commit anything, Nehu cannot commit. Let me be very frank. I think this is again very important. If you are expecting financial support from Nehu, let me put it right now, zero. Because we are not even having our own resources to take care of our requirement. You come to Nehu campus. I don't want to say so many things. You will see by yourselves. We are not having enough fund to even take care of our requirement. Leave aside giving money outside the campus. So that... And that's why I think in one of the press conference, uh, VZ must have said that we'll give you intellectual support, yeah. but no financial support. That is that is true. But the colleges are under the control of the state government. And that they are particularly if you are thinking from deficit and, and, and the government, it is fully. And I, I have heard somewhere where the CM or his uh, ministers have said that we will support the government colleges. Government what government. government college only. But what about those which are deficit? What about those which are run by private entity? Will you allow it to be killed or you will support them with financial support on a yearly basis for which you have to have money? I'm not sure even the state government whether they have enough money to support because let's say, factually speaking, you know, we don't have money to give you regular supply of electricity. I don't know from where they will bring this money to support. And that's where they need to really break their head, have a brainstorming, that how best we can tweak it so that it maintains those college, upscale it with the support that we will be given, at least bare minimum, so that you sustain. And with the, in a pro, and not only that, you know, there is also another important aspect that I want to touch here. Maybe we maybe we have to discuss it at a right forum that probably the city-based colleges are also taking a lot of advantage as far as the uh, admission is concerned. I'm told that there are three four shift. And going by our regulation, OB6, it clearly defines what will be the ratio of teachers and what will be the workload of teachers. Mm -hmm. You can't run three, four shift having, and there is a ratio that per teacher, how many students in the class, particularly if you are having practical, you probably cannot have more than 20, 25 students. Mm -hmm. But I know for sure that some colleges has admitted maybe 40, 50. I mean, where will, so the reason why I'm saying is maybe because the city-based colleges are, taking too many, you are left out with anything for those which are on the outskirt. And if you probably, and at some point of time, I think academic, academic council, we will have to discuss that, that. What is the limit of your intake? Can you open three shape, four shape, five shape, just because you have taken everybody who has applied in your college, or it will be governed by our ordinance, which says what will be the teacher enrollment ratio and what will be the total intake in a given class and it says that if you have more than 2025 20, you have to make multiple sections and then comes the teacher's load because UGC has clearly prescribed what will be the workload of a teacher so what I'm trying to say is maybe if we that's why we need a holistic look at the whole picture so that maybe if we have control a little bit on the city-based colleges maybe some in a small town maybe people would have got admitted because they also offer admission. 
It's just that nobody wants to live Shillong because they find that everything is located here easy going. Outside, I don't know whether I even get electricity, a lab or even a library to study. Let's leave aside even internet, whether you even have classroom to sit properly. So this is where I think that state government has to pitch in and pitch in very, very seriously in order to, because I don't want that because of NDP, even the bare minimum education that our village folks or small town folks are getting, it should be totally curtailed. I think that will be a, a, a disaster in already strained education system that we have in Meghalaya. And that's where I always wonder that why the state government is not putting its brain, why the Nihu, of course, I understand we have our limitations. So beyond academic control, we can't do much. But the financial constraint which will be, which the colleges are facing, particularly in those which doesn't have enough enrollment, how will the state government pitch in? I believe that they are probably working on some modality. I don't know. I don't see it in, in, in anywhere. So I hope they are doing it. Kan ni kerjanya keren jadi kalau ke NDP kalau kita bercakap jalan nama arba ke ke topik ruk bercakap he, di Hendry Shwa bangin pengkod ya kan ni ni sangat kan dia kalau ke A ke bawah VC nanti Vice Chancellor jangan North Eastern Hill University udah bangang. In what case stand is very clear. I think till date I have not received any. Our principals are agree. Our students you have already you had already published in the paper jo hai. Our students are agree. Our principals are agree jo hai. Even jo hai and uh, Nehu already had taken a decision to implement the new education policy and till date except one or two I can't say but none of the principal jo hai even jo hai sent me any mail I am not going to implement the new education policy. Academic council I clearly stated all the things in the papers. Academic council for framing of the rules. Yes, in the next meeting, we are ready to discuss. Even I am ready to discuss with the jo hai anyone, not only the MCT. Even I already made a discussion with the KCU, also the jo hai NEUSU, also the HY, HYNC, HYC, and uh, FK, FKGP. I already made a discussion in this hour. And everybody is jo hai convinced for the benefit of the youth of the Meghalaya. Actually, yes, Meghalaya Carter, Meghalaya, jo hai, union member, is directly concerned with the state government. No, he is not working under my domain. Even I cannot directly say any to, anything to the jo hai, Meghalaya Teachers Association. I am ready to discuss, but I cannot even directly call to him. If he is, he is uh, willing to come here, just I am ready to discuss. Vice Chancellor of the Nehu never said the hybrid. No. Never said. This is raised by the someone I can't say. But I never said this. I am going to implement the in a hybrid mode. I just given a chance in the worst case. Just like in the worst position. If any colleges <coughs> are not in position, so they have the chance to implement the NEP next year. University is ready to take the burden. The university is going to implement even someone is not going to implement the NEP. So university is going to develop two systems. No? This is a burden on the university. The university is ready to take this burden. In the interest of the youth of the Meghalaya. Shwam Pinkot Ikani Akwa Atang Kasambap Napimo. I just want a summary of whatever you've spoken. And uh, maybe you can, uh, we can end this program with um, a, a note of advice or a suggestion on how to go about NEP if at all it's implemented okay. in the state of Meghalaya from this current year. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, let me start. From this current year, no, if you ask me, because we have Academic Council has not approved it. So the question of starting from this Academic Council doesn't arise as far as I'm concerned, as far as the Academic Council is concerned. And like I said in the beginning, Academic Council is the supreme body as far as the policy, academic policy is concerned. Second, I think now the ordinance is in place. Now you have the regulation in place. We have one year's time, prepare all the syllabus, lay out everything to the public and the state government which each detail if you say internship what does it mean if you say vocational training specify what do you mean when people have to exit and come back and still do a skill development uh, program or an internship how will you adjust that these criteria has to be and that's why i said it's not a matter of ego i think if i was if i have to decide today if i was the vice chancellor i would say nothing doing i'm sorry that was done in hurry let me roll it back. I, I, I will convene Academic Council immediately. Let's solve 
make the syllabus, tell all the department to come out with their syllabus for the entire four years undergraduate program. And then only we will discuss it threadbare. Once it is done, lay it to the state government. State government's representative can have a look at it, suggest, fine tune, so that everybody is taken on board. And, and on the part of the state government, I think they should send a very, very categorical statement. I won't say a diktat to the university, but certainly you have every right to intervene and say that I cannot play around with the future of my kids. Some are starting with NEP, some are not starting. What is this going on in this, in this, in this state? You can't allow a person to dictate terms sitting in the campus of Nihu. You have to make sure that it is done by taking everyone on board. And that's where, and the everyone on board question has been very categorically stated that you can't implement it from this year. Other than that, there's nothing much to discuss. Rest is all academic council decision to frame syllabus for third semester, fourth semester, fifth semester, sixth semester, seventh semester, eighth semester, and come out with all this detail so that everybody understands what I, where I'm jumping into. What is the depth of that pond where I'm trying to swim? And without that, I think, so my humble uh, suggestion would be that leave your ego aside and think about the students and we have to work under a system. I always hate to see people trying to work by convenience. Oh, it's convenient to me to do it this way. No, there is a system. Your, your, your intention may be good, but because you are trying to break the system, it will be looked at as if your intention also is bad. Yeah. And that's why when you have good intention, follow the procedure laid down as part of the Nehu Act, Statutes and Ordinance. I think there will be no problem. And, and to for record, this is not the first time we are changing our curriculum. I don't understand. That's why sometimes I wonder where we are. This university has not started two years ago or three years ago. We have had many system change over the period of time. Before the CBCS, which we are using now, we had a yearly system. Everybody, most of us have gone through that. Before that, there was another system where my elder brothers must have studied or the generation before us have studied, mm -hmm. which means system will keep renewing itself based on the requirement. It's just that you have to prepare in advance. Don't take any hasty decisions, which will create a stir of this kind where teachers are not willing to support you because they don't agree with your line of uh, taking these steps because that is wrong. That is not approved by a statutory body of the university, which is the highest authority as far as the academic policy is concerned. Thank you, uh, Professor Pradhan. Okay, uh, my take is similar to you know him. Uh, with regard to <clears throat> our, if you want to conclude, I started with by saying you know what is the demand of the MCTA, the Meghalaya College Student. Our single demand is, you know, you withdraw the defective notification that you issued to your CDC, who is an OSD, on the 12th of July to all the principals of the affiliated colleges, announcing that you are implementing the NAP 2020 from this academic session, because we say it's defective, there was no such thing has happened. That is the first and foremost thing. And I said, why we need to, you know, uh, we need to withdraw it. We cannot start something on a defective note. That is one thing. The first thing is that one, withdrawal. The thing is, you know, second thing is, you know, in the interest, the second one is in the interest of the students, you know, our students, I feel, believe, strongly believe, the MCD strongly believe that, you know, this passing of the syllabus on July and implementing in August is too early. You know, there are so many things which have to be talked about, you know, and we may be blamed because, you know, of saying like, you know, being a hurdle or, you know, being regressive and, you know, I mean, not to move out from our comfort zone. These are the things, you know, people used to define us. Uh, our thing is, you know, <clears throat> uh, small. Uh, if the if the blueprint of the internship is not there in place, it can be misused, and if that is misused, you know, the whole thing as envisioned by the you know NEP yeah. will go wrong. True. You know, it will be wrong. You take away internship, you take take away vocational. The old course is better than N mm -hmm. <laughs> NEP. Mm -hmm. like, These are the cornerstone. You cannot, you know, you know, you cannot, you cannot, you know, dilute this concept too much where it become almost irrelevant right that is one thing another thing lastly i want to say is you know the state government cannot be just a bystander uh, st stand on the side and you know pass very comments okay as if you know what watching some fight between two people and just you know, acting as an educator you know they have to step in and play a constructive role if you ask the mcta the mcta have always insisted you know that the government should set up a task force on the implementation of you know state task force or implementation of NEP as of now till now nothing has happened in the beginning they just handed over to RUSA you know they had no idea what they were dealing with 
So we want a task force to be set up. Of course, there is a you know, higher education committee that is being set up, but there is broad over thing. But specifically, you know, a task force to implement NEP and right from, you know, uh, LKG to PG, you know, not mm -hmm. uh, from, you know, this one it has to be this one. And maybe they can start with, you know, sending out, you know, some forms to all the principals and said, what are the likely things, difficulties that you're going to face, you know, in terms of NEP. Now things are becoming clearer to the principals. So in terms of manpower as well as infrastructure, so that they can, you know, build up a, you know, inventory of the items, you know, which they feel like the government can fulfill within their limits. If they make some effort, you know, at least some blueprint comes out, not just plain words. So, and maybe provide some training to the teachers, you know, with, the, with regard to counseling, mentoring, all the things, skill level, you know. So those things, you know, the, 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 the government should come forward. And not just, you know, make some, you know, comments, yeah. apology, mm -hmm. merely lip service. Mm -hmm. It has to come with some concrete plan. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, mm, things are going to be from bad to worse. Mm -hmm. uh, education is going to be become very expensive. You know, education is going to be very expensive. We are moving toward, you know, a very Americanized model mm -hmm. whereby, you know, parents, uh, very few people go to college, you know, in America. And those who go, you know, parents have their lifetime savings to finance those, you know, say this one. Here, if you see, you know, uh, I just recall, like, you know, when I was just, now we have said, uh, when I was in school, uh, I, I think we were around five of them. My father was uh, not a regular, you know, office goer. He used to drive some jeeps. And we ha he never had problem with paying our fees. We used to pay the entire fees in one go. But now I am a teacher uh, in, a prof uh, in a UGC scale, and I have got only one son. And I have to pay my son's fees in installment. Are we going to point here? Yeah. So, so what is happening here is, you know, it will later on, you know, uh, regular college education will be as expensive as medical education and you will have to apply for loan. If this is the thing, I'm just telling you. That means if, only the halves can, yes, can, can yes, get admission yes, in yes. colleges. So, the government will have to step in. Education and, you know, another thing is healthcare is, uh, is a sector from where the government cannot shy away from. Mm -hmm. We have elected them. It's their responsibility to see that, you know, proper education and healthcare is being provided. So these are the two areas where you cannot compromise and a government cannot, you know, of any democratically elected government cannot be a bystander. Mm. That's what we have to say. And if you allow me just one sentence I want to say before. Uh, you know, uh, my request also will be to all stakeholders, please read the NEP document carefully and understand the spirit of it in total. I think so far people are only looking at piecemeal things. Yeah. I think if they look at the last few pages, I think it speaks about the total spirit of the NEP. Yes. I think which state government has to understand, vice chancellor has to understand, academic council have to understand, they have understood, but they will understand it more. Everybody has to understand the spirit of NEP. Yeah. Right now we are only doing lip service and so on. Yeah. The spirit is missing. And the moment we understand the spirit of NEP, I think all this problem will be solved. At least those that can be solved will be solved. That cannot be solved, of course, will mm. remain as an issue, mm. which probably we can defer it and mm. keep addressing as time comes by. Yes. But don't kill the spirit of NEP. Yes. This is what I would like to say in conclusion. And the spirit is to revolutionize exactly. the education system. So, of course, um, everybody has accepted the fact that the idea of implementing the NAP, NEP or the National Education Policy is indeed a wise idea. However, creating a, a culture of continuous learning, providing mentoring and coaching and creating um, an environment where there is a coordination, close coordination between the teachers, the state government, the students and all the stakeholders, where there is an environment, it can help the teachers navigate more effectively, enhance the, the competency skilled uh, teaching practices. They have a program of mental singing, like Shem, like Kren, like the Jingmut Halor, the Jingmut Junk and EP, but Ladat Pintre Kameka and Dom Tau Snam can Jacum no, but Ladat Pintre Kameka, Lashem Snam, Ka Ekabanja. They Nanget Baki Pai Ba, he can Kinsa Kinsa Rai, but Kinsa Kinsa Lab and comment. Hagan is a comment section, Jenny Hapo, Halokum Ka Ekabaki Snow, Halok Jupiter Kam Jok and EP, but Ladat is no Piso Yahab. Pilaban comment hapo la defense so you have a lot comment link at the teaching IG mode to jump key. The thing that took a long enough question of course you can make a program to me. How do you bring in a shaman? How do you go for the key bottle?